So this is our daily conversation. <laughs> We're not kidding. Welcome back to Midnight O Two, Season Two, Episode Eleven. This is your host Amy. How was your day? I hope everything went well because today I have a special guest on my episode, and his name is James Choi. For those who know, he is my boyfriend, but I have him on the show today to talk about something a little bit nerdy with me. <laughs> So he is a PhD student at the University of Washington studying physics, and sometimes we have interesting conversations about science, about the world. And I thought it would be cool to have him on the show to talk about it with me. So, hello, James. Hello,、um, my name is James Choi.、Um, as Amy said, I'm、uh, pursuing PhD in the University of Washington, and I'm. Studying physics, so yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so a lot of people ask me, how do we even communicate? I study something completely different from how you study, you know. And we have totally different views on the in the world, and we think really differently, and we work differently too. So when we went to school together, we have different ways of studying and thinking. And we somehow ended up together, but that's a side story. <laughs> the important part today is I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to talk to you about what science means and what you think about literature at the same time. And I'm going to tell you how I think about science. I think some of my viewers are not scientists, and science and math to a lot of people they're just school subjects, you know. And I wanted you to introduce. How they could be applied in daily life to my audiences? Yeah, I I've often seen those memes where it's like, oh, in high school I learned quadratic formula, and like, I'm I've never used that in my entire life other than high school. Why did we learn it? Blah blah blah. Right?、Mm -hmm. You have you seen those、yeah. kind of memes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I do relate, and I think, to a certain extent, it's true that. Like the things you learn in high school, a lot of times you're not gonna be using that directly. But I think more important than just the content of what you're studying is the process of learning those. So if you're approaching,、uh, I guess, an English class, the way you approach、uh, like the problems, not problems, but homeworks, would be definitely different from like math or science. Mm -hmm. And that kind of exercise, I think, is beneficial whether or not you're studying math, science, or whichever field you are. Those can give you different kind of approaches to different kind of、uh, situations. I think that's one thing that high school math, high school science, or any kind of subject could teach you whether or not you need it. The、mm -hmm. you need the actual information. Um, and so yeah, go on. I guess that's mostly. I guess in high school, I think that's what I would argue when people say that's useless. No, I I think that's it teaches you something not from just the quadratic formula or like this.、Um, you know, how long does it take for a ball to drop at some height?、Um, but it's like the. Mindset, the be able, the ability to think in certain ways so that you can solve those problems is, I think, what is crucial in,、um, in our can be crucial in our daily life. I see, because a lot of times, just like you said, we have different ways of doing the homework as well as the assignments and tests. And sometimes in English class, we are often given topics and we write essays. Or in college, we have timed essay, and you are given a topic, and you are supposed to write for like the two three hours on four books, trying to form like a thesis, everything in a short amount of time. And I think it uses different part of someone's brain when、mm -hmm. it comes to you know writing class compared to science class. It also opens up more area you can explore. I think like whether or not you're 
you're probably if you're already settled in something like English, for example, you're less likely to just transition in, into like the field of science. But if you have some kind of previous knowledge of what you learned in high school, for example, I think there's there are things you can refer back and just incorporate into your literature as well. Um, mm. So, so if a student asks you, what, why do we, why do we need to study? Why do we need to learn science and math? What are you going to say? So, I would say, it's not just about the top, the content itself. It's all also about you being in the process of learning these. I think that's、uh, crucial. Number one, and not number one, but I think there's also some. Things that science can teach you, for example, is critical thinking. I think that can be applied in general in a lot of cases, especially in our world where there's a lot of news going on. And I think science can teach you to be a little bit more critical about what, I guess, what the media says, and you can perhaps make a better judgment because you have a better or You've thought more critically about what people are saying or what the media is saying. One of my professor what would say along his like during his lecture, he would say things like, "We're we're studying like quantum mechanics, for example," and he's like out of nowhere he would say, "So the next time you're stranded in the desert island, you can solve this equation using the scattering equation for this two particle collision and blah 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 blah." It's just kind of funny, like. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't think I got that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's it's basically saying like, oh, you di- you. It's he's making it sound as it's like same thing as a meme. Like, oh, like why did I learn this like quadratic、oh, okay. formula? But it's like equivalent in the higher、um, the level in physics. It's、mm-hmm. you can think of it that way. Not、right. quite, but something like that. Honestly, we're often seen as the nerdy couple <laughs> among our friends, <laughs> among my friends too. You know, they think we st- we talk about the weirdest things ever. Yeah, just so just to be clear, we don't talk about science or literature explicitly. We don't we, because we if never we go into、that. too much details about it, then there will be a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's either one of us would be、crisis. either one of us would be very bored in the process and be like, "What?"、Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, for example, if I go into Shakespeare, Shakespeare this, Shakespeare that,、uh, James will be like, "No, can you not?" <laughs> I don't even like, say no. Can the you not? I just you like、know. zone out. I I just walk away probably. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing you know about literature is the line like "to be or not to be," and more of that than you can go on. <laughs> to be or not to be—that is the question. Yeah. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer、okay. the slings and arrows. Okay. Okay. Got it. <laughs> you got it. So honestly, I think it's important because I do. I do think that it's nice to have someone to explain scientific theories when you want to know. So whenever we go to like zoos or aquariums, different places, and I would ask James like, "How does this work? Can you explain?" And then James would be in this science mode, scientific mode, go on and on and on for like the next like twenty minutes, and I'll be like,、oh, "Why did I ask him? Why did I start?" <laughs> so that out that often happens. She lo- she lost me, f- like two seconds into me talking, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I always say, yeah, I understand, but actually I don't, because <laughs> that's how we could end the topic. But anyways, I wanted you to share with my audiences how could they study science after they graduated from college or from high school. For example, like、mm, where could they find resources or places in which they could learn more about science if they're interested. So. Learning science, I feel like that's some. It sounds as if that's like some kind of、um, requires education or something like that. But I think、mm-hmm. you can get a lot of information through、uh, 
um, modern media. YouTube is, I think, a great source. It's definitely not perfect. You're not going to get um, perfect. You're not going to learn perfectly. But YouTube, there's a lot of good channels that are dedicated into these like scientific ideas or uh, scientific research. And they do a pretty good job in um, making it viewer fr friendly for those who aren't in the field. So mm -hmm. I think that's a good point to start. And then there's also also other medias that are really like more specific. There's even like uh, MIT, I don't know if it's MIT, but there's like college lectures within YouTube that you could probably find um, if you really tried to look for it. So is there but, a channel that you recommend, like the name of it? Oh, in general, I think SciShow is a pretty good channel for how do like, you spell it? I think it's just S C I show. Okay. And it's it's short. It's mm -hmm. not. It's usually not over ten minutes each uh, video. And it gives you like random things about like li random facts and a little bit more detail about those, like about animals about stu some kind of research study, um, a lot of things. And I think that's a pretty good place to get yourself interested in these kind of topics. So do you think sometimes you studying science and me studying literature, like, do you think how we study different perspectives and study different fields create like a dynamic in our conversation? Like I'm asking it as a host and as your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely think there's something unique about like our kind of dynamic. Mhm. Mm um we're we're never really talking deeply about the fields that we've studied. You you won't be diving into literature that much. I won't be diving into science that much. But there are times where we are for example, there are times when we go into a restaurant and think, oh, what do you think about this restaurant? And there's different <laughs> things that we would focus on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are things that, for example, you would mention things like the user in interaction. User interface interaction. Yeah, within mm -hmm. the room, for example. Right. Interior-wise, mm -hmm. the design. And I could also, even though I'm not, I haven't studied those I could also um, talk about those and also add inputs that perhaps you didn't recognize or mm -hmm. didn't initially agree. Uh, there's elements like that. And that's, we have that kind of interesting kind of conversation um, when we're generally when we go out in dates, restaurants, uh, it could be art museum. Um, there's we definitely have different focuses due to our interests but nonetheless i think it, um each of us gives us a different perspective on different kind of situations yeah i do appreciate that honestly so we actually don't really just talk lovey-dovey all the times so we talk about <laughs> All these different kind of weird stuffs, you know, from the world to the universe to the history, and we debate. We call it the passionate debate. We don't really fight <laughs> for those who are wondering. We don't really fight about um, if science is better or literature is better. And if we have kids later on, I'm not trying to force them into studying literature or science, right? You won't, right? I, I won't, but I... Actually, uh, I think until high school, I would insist them to learn all the topics in their best abilities. Why? Why because is that? that, as I said before, it leaves you more opportunity or leaves you more options as you perhaps decide a specific topic. I want them to <laughs> have that option to be able to decide, I don't want to do this. I w or I want to do this. I think 
a lot of times if you're not exposed to those all those kind of different fields there may be times where you can't pursue the field that you want because you don't have like a prerequisite the foundation for it. yeah the foundation mm. and i think that's very um important for example so you think it's important to try everything before you decide mm -hmm. until high school like i'm not i'm not i'm definitely not going to force them after college and actually if they have a concrete idea and concrete plan by high school I'm not going to go against it. I'm going to support them. I'm not going to particularly like force them to study some kind of topic. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, which is mo very likely, until high school, you don't have any ideas. Even in by the time you go into college, you don't have much idea as to what you really want to study. That seems right. to be common. And so I want that. I want them to be able to choose the option of what they want to study and for that they need to know the options but you've only looked at physics since the very beginning yes right i would yes i pretty much been only looking at physics but there's i guess this is the segue into why is literature important in people who's studying science as well um when you're writing applications, you need to write. When you're writing research paper, you need to write. When you're reading paper, you need to be able to read and think about what's the main point, what's the process here, and those are very important. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things, like literature is also going to be important whether or not you're in the field of literature um, you need to be able to read you need to be able to analyze what it's saying you need to be right. able to convey what you want to say through writing and those i've learned through high school and i've learned in college and like not so great but i still am grateful i'm learned i've learned those the very basics so i can still use those and you've helped me a lot as well in my process. In terms of, of editing essays and understanding <laughs> a topic, yes. summarizing a book, understanding a thesis. I think the importance, importance of literature is realized often too late. A lot of my close friends, they don't understand the importance of writing and reading until later on in life. And when they try to apply for a job, no matter it's if it's resume to grad school paper applications or interview papers cover letters and then they would come ask for my help they would say oh i didn't think that you know important skills like these skills are important when it comes to applying for a job it's just it doesn't end when school ends let's put it that way <laughs> yeah yeah really... i think we're both we're both the type to keep on learning no matter if it's in our field or not yeah, I have a question for you. What is it? So, what are, I guess I mentioned like previously, like um, we talk about different things in our relationship. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of have different kind of aspects. Do you have any concrete example? I just couldn't think one out of my head. So do you have any specific concrete examples? Concrete examples of what? of us contributing different ideas into a specific topic. Mm. I have a few examples, but the one that I remember the most is when I was studying a lot about user in experience, user interface. And when we went, we went into a new restaurant that newly opened near our school, Mm -hmm. And then we talked about how bad the interior, the design, and the function of every little thing in that store. Remember? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I could think of at this moment. But when it comes to conversation, I think a lot of times we talk about moral values as well as how scientists would often view things. And I think it's different from how writers and humanities people would view things. Mm -hmm. Like in science, you value 
um, I think you would give like a hypothesis. Is that how you say it? Hypothesis. Yeah, hypothesis. In science, you would give a hypothesis, and then you would go into research methods, and you would do different trials, trying to see if your assumptions match what everything started. Is that how you say it? And later on, you would form a conclusion, no matter if it's right or wrong. And sometimes people tell me in science and math, there's always a right answer. There's always a right value, but that's not necessarily the thing in literature or specifically in poetry. But it doesn't mean that you could go everywhere in poetry. A lot of people sometimes misunderstand. They think that poetry could be anything you want it to be. I think it can, but then people have to be careful when they try to interpret. Poetry in their own ways. I do think poetry is open. I think it's people could be open-minded about poetry, but at the same time, there's always a bigger theme, a big direction of what the poet what wants the poem to be. But a lot of times, people don't see that, and they will think in science and math there is always a right answer. That's why a lot of them like science, math, think. Those are more logical than humanities and literature. Hmm. I think I asked the topic. Oh,、uh, uh, outside the topic, I think we're going overboard. <laughs> no, like I think this is this is important conversation for a lot、oh. of people. Yeah, because a lot of people think poetry, English, music, you could just feel it, and if, if you feel right about it, then that's the meaning. That's why a lot of people also find poetry difficult to interpret. When、yeah. we were in high school, middle school, your English teachers probably asked you to annotate this, annotate that. But you, a lot of students don't know what to annotate. They don't know what to write. They don't know how to think, because I feel like, first of all, people think differently, and sometimes、mm-hmm. a guidance. Is important when it comes to teaching English. Yeah, yeah. I, there's no like right or wrong formula, but doesn't mean that you could go anywhere. I think I agree with you. So I also want to ask you for more examples on why science is important in our daily lives. I think I kind of shifted the topic a little bit. So could you go back? We could go back a little bit and let's talk about it. Okay. Okay. So. There's as I'm teaching, I I TA for the physics class in the University of Washington, and、so、I grade labs, for example, and oftentimes I see some students just ignoring、um, their data, despite being, despite the data not fitting what they expect. They just leave it. Why?、There. Is saying, that even legal? <laughs> <laughs> This is a I class. I know, but like, what is the professor going to say? Well, I take them points off for this.、Oh. Obviously,、okay. I would take points off. Okay. I'm not saying I'm not saying that they don't recognize that it's wrong or something like that. I mean, they sometimes are, but they also just leave it there. Leave it just. There and no questions asked、mm. beyond that. Um, but science obviously is trying to determine what's really happening. Like, is there something wrong with it? And I wish also students would recognize that and be.、Uh, I'm not saying I, everyone should like try to get hundred points, but. Part of the science is trying to figure out what's real and I guess what's really meaningful. And if their data doesn't seem to be correct, I think it's important to just go back and try to make it at least see if what's wrong.、Um, sometimes students just don't care,、mm-hmm. um, and I think that's also the case in our modern media, where, for example, news says says something based on this. Data. People just say, "Okay, that must be true." It's supported by data. Um. But that c- can be misleading, and I think science 
if you've studied science and I think studying science should help you be able to pursue a little bit deeper into, okay, is this really what's happening? I see. It, I mm-hmm. could I could go in a little bit more detail, but I don't know if your audience would find it interesting. But there was a news uh, during this pandemic where the news, I, I don't know if it's a news or paper, uh, article, I think it's a news. They implied that gator, um, neck gator, which is basically a clothing to cover your mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one form of uh, clothing to cover your mouth. And they said a neck gator is less efficient in stopping the spread re- compared to not having having anything on your over your mouth. Mm-hmm. And they referred to this paper that was published. I see. Um, obviously, you should be more critical about thinking this and say, is that what that happened? Is that what the paper is ex- uh, saying um, explicitly? Is that what it, the paper is, is saying explicitly? Mm. Or are they just inferring that from the paper? And I think uh, this kind of critical mindset is something that science should teach you. Wow. And that's why I think... <laughs> no, never mind. Go on. Science is still important in our modern day, especially during this pandemic. There's a lot of numbers being thrown around. I think it's also important to recognize what we should take away from those. Are those numbers valid? Are those numbers what they claim to be? Are those numbers mean significance? Or are they just... You know, those kind of things are something that science can teach you. Like, being able to critically think about those, I think, is important in this day when there's so many things being thrown around uh, in media. Mm -hmm. So, do you think it's hard being a scientist in today's world? I think for the name just being a scientist, I think it's really amazing to be a scientist at this time. There's... Because we've broadened our knowledge so much, there's even so much more things that we could try doing. Um, There's a lot more we could explore because of the technology that we have more knowledge about how to use those. Um, So it's a, I think it's the best time to um, pursue science. But realistically speaking, I think. It's also quite saturated, so I think it's also more competitive in that sense. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, your I girlfriend mean, is a poet and a writer. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't I guess, tell which one is harder. I think my path is harder. Perhaps, I think I I I think that is the case, because I feel like if you're in the STEM field, you're pretty. Uh, a lot of times seems to be pretty set Mm -hmm. but that being said i think there's still there's a lot of people who majored in stem or studied stem but didn't end up working in stem yeah i see i think that's also common hey i could finish Um, your sentence (laughs) (laughs) yes i'm happy about it well then do you think like do you like me studying literature do you think it's good Whether you study literature or not, <laughs> that doesn't matter to me. Oh, um, okay. Well, I think... It's it's Amy that I'm dating, not <laughs> A. Okay, okay, okay. Let's keep this professional, but, okay? Uh, <laughs> Let's keep this professional. Okay. I, I wanted to say that because a lot of times Asian parents, a lot of them, ask me, oh, what do you study? And I tell them I study English literature and visual arts. And then sometimes they ask me, are you, like, bad at math or science? (laughs) How rude. They actually asked me. I actually had different parents who asked me about it. But then when it comes to other people who are not Asian parents, they're like, wow, you're talented. You get to write. You know how to design. Those are, you know, talents. You should keep working on it. Just, just sad. But I'm not bad at math. You know, I love math. I actually like calculus quite a bit. I do like math. I don't like chemistry, but I like biology. I like physics. I like math. There's some 
input I would like to give is that I think higher education um, is kind of glorified, especially the STEM field is quite glorified mm -hmm. in our modern society. Yeah, why is that um, even the case? I don't know, but um, I'm in the field of science. Um, I'm studying physics. I'm pursuing PhD. I'm like the example of someone who's, I get benefited from this like um, glorified STEM fields. Right. But I would just like to say that I really appreciate Amy being able to Right, because I've, or uh, I can't write like Amy does in a million years. Like I cannot convey my feelings into writing when I'm writing my essays. These are really hard for me, and I really appreciate Amy being around to help me out. Aww. And I, I really feel the importance of these writing skills or <laughs> this kind of putting thoughts into words mm -hmm. the process are very hard for me and because of that i think i'm able to really um appreciate like literature it's i i don't know if that's li creative writing the correct like term, writing in general but yeah, it's something that I can't accomplish I, in a million years, but it's so important. I think it's really important. Like, nobody's going to go and in, come inside my head and be like, oh, that's what he thinks. Good. <laughs> yeah. I need, to, I need to be the one writing those down. And those are the times when I think, wow, I really need to know these kind of skills. And therefore, literature is really important. Yeah, you're going to and end up writing papers, publishing papers, and teaching students, and teaching college classes. You're you have to you have to grade those essays and papers, research papers, you know, specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I'm not saying one like science or or literature is better than the other, mm -hmm. but it's definitely going to be important either like either of them is very important you can't have just science without literature and you can't just have literature without science in our just mm -hmm. daily society I, and if i just want to also emphasize that if you're not really interested in science or any kind of field, I don't think you should particularly uh, try to fit yourself into one kind of field, especially like STEM field, uh, because it's just it never just mind. doesn't scratch work what that I way. just said. Scratch no, what like I it said. makes sense. It totally makes sense because you know I tried to do psychology. I was a research assistant at Seattle Children's for like almost two years. And I realized I didn't want to work with data. I was working in a lab. I was the only non-major psychology student. You know, they were asking me why I was why I was there, and I was like, oh, I just was interested in psychology. And I wanted to find out more. And I worked for two years on different data numbers. And I realized at one moment I just wanted to work with people. I wanted to work at something else like human interaction instead of working with data in the lab and then that's when i realized oh research is not for everybody science is not for everybody yeah and yeah. currently i think stem field is kind of oversaturated overrated. and overrated but sometimes people think... go into stem field for the money for the fame for yeah you know because that's understandable parents expectations and everything but just because someone else told you uh, right it could be your parents I don't think you should be wasting in that field. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good idea. Good, if you have the opportunities to study it, go, like experience like what it means to be in the field. I think that's totally fine. Um, I think experience is always going to be beneficial. Mm -hmm. 
um, whether or not you're actually going to use that skills. But I I don't think you should pursue a field whether uh, if you're not interested in it. Right. I was just telling my friend, I think education is always the right investment. And I think I've said this in the previous episodes too when I talked about education. But I do think higher education is not for everybody. That's what I believe. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. I don't think higher education is mandatory. It's been... <laughs> it feels weird from someone who's studying it's not convincing the... for you to say yeah it, it's it? not convincing for it's me also to not say convincing it. for me to say it either but i uh-huh. i really don't think higher education is necessarily for everyone right but, but if you have the opportunity in your path yeah if it's required in your path or if you have the ability and just want to experience some of it i think that's perfectly fine i'm just saying or if you're in the situation where you don't really know what mm-hmm. to do, I think higher education can g- help you guide into determining what you really want to do, what you don't want to do, and I think because that's, it has you have to put a lot of effort and time, yeah, and commitment into it, right? Not everybody mm-hmm. could get through it. Yeah, but I don't think you are. If you realize along the way, something in the education field, STEM, mm-hmm. um, perhaps teaching. Uh, you know, if you don't require those degrees, I think it's perfectly fine for you to drop out of college. Um, Mm -hmm. Actually, people who recognize that they don't really need those kind of education, they can still succeed pretty well. I mean, there's classic example like Steve Jobs, yeah. But that's too classic. <laughs> he's I, I he's out of the norm. If you're but... a hardworking person, you know what you want to do, and you are very clear, and you have your goals set, then no matter what you do in education or outside of education, you will do well. It has to do with perseverance and a person's personality. That's what I believe. So this is our daily conversation. It is. It is. <laughs> it actually is. So I also wanted kidding. to tell you. Yeah, I also wanted to tell you last night... I was talking with my friend and he was asking me um, oh, what what my job is. And I was telling him, oh, you could guess what my job is. It's a job that a- Asian parents wouldn't like. It's a job that Asian parents think I'm going to end up on the street. And then my new friend, that's why he was guessing what I was doing. He said, oh, are you an artist? <laughs> are you a model? Are you a designer? And then I was like, okay, so I was an artist. I am an artist. I did exhibitions and I did modeling as well. And then I am a designer. <laughs> and I was like, you, did you everything. are all right. All the check marks. All the check marks. Yes, very right. And he was like, what else? And I was like, you're missing the big part. I'm, I'm an author. I'm a writer. He was like, whoa. And I was like, right? Parents think I'm going to end up on the street. Yeah. <laughs> Working to on me, it. I think the classic example of a, I that's, this is my perspective on like the classic Asian parent mm-hmm. uh, idea is being on the street is a like job that re- results in you being on the street is like singing career. Singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. But a lot of people perform right. on the street, so they do end up on the street. That's what I mean. And it's, <laughs> and also they mean it in the sense like it's not so great. Well, Like they just end up becoming end up on, the on the street because street. they don't have money. But people, that's their one, one of their ways of surviving, you know, mm-hmm. showing off their talent and maybe one day someone in the crowd, is that someone you need to know, right? <laughs> that's the lyrics. And then someone sign them and they could become you know, superstar. I think that's a lot of singer stream or trying to get their talent out there. Because I think for writers, all you need to do is keep writing, keep writing and singing, singer, keep singing. So people could hear your voice, so people could read your words. That's what I believe. And mm. for science, for scientists, I think you just do your research and one day maybe you'll find out how to make a dinosaur. How to, you know, <laughs> what am I saying? How to like do crazy things. 
and the world would be like, whoa. But I believe people who really love what they do, they don't do it for the fame. They don't do it for the money. They do it because that's their, that's where their soul belongs to. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I think we might have to change this uh, podcast to Amy and James conversation. <laughs> Daily, Daily conversation. conversation. What do we talk about? Yeah, what do we talk about? Featuring honestly. my boyfriend. Yeah. That's honestly, I think it's important though. We have a cool combination. I think you have enough knowledge and science to debate with me <laughs> about what's wrong, what's what's not right. Right? Question mark. So to recap, I don't know if that, I'm, to I'm recap, we fast. told audiences today what we think about literature and science and we think both are very important and you also mentioned that um math and science are still important outside of school it could be applied in daily life and mm -hmm. what what could you is there like a last sentence you want to summarize or just encourage audiences or students young adults when, when they try to pursue in science yeah so if you're in, for example, high school, I know a lot of times you're doing things like you don't want to do. This is also the case in college as well, uh, but it's not to that extent. But either case, um, mm -hmm. just having that kind of experience, having that kind of knowledge is never going to hurt you. And um, so I... Th I would say just try your best. Um, you may not end up um, doing the getting the best scores or something, but you're s still gonna get some tricks out of it. You're still gonna learn something out of it, and it may be actually useful, um, like directly applicable all along your life. So try your best, and don't be hung up by how bad you do. For example. So yeah, that's what I would say. Yes. I think for young writers, just keep writing. I've said this a thousand times already. Keep writing and submit your writings to journalism, to different publishing places. That's that's one way I would do it. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked a lot today. What do you think? Uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> um, I think we went tangent from ha, tangent. You get it, math. Ha, ha, ha. No, not we get, funny. We, <laughs> this is this is my kind of joke that okay. Amy started to just accept. I have to <laughs> accept. Time. What am I gonna do? Okay. Well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. I hope I didn't bore the viewers or listeners. Um, I hope you didn't ruin the show. We'll see what the audience's reaction are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, Want to say good night to my audience? No audience has done that. Has they? Have they? Yeah, they have. <laughs> okay. Well, good night, guys. And <laughs> please continue to listen to Amy's Midnight O2. That's mine. I gave the title for that. You gave the, the O2 only. <laughs> Let's be clear. I That's asked... like more than half. Hey, no, I was like a midnight oxygen. And you said, why don't you just name it O2? Well, fine. <laughs> well, good night, guys. Um, good night, everyone. Bye-bye. And thanks again for tuning into Midnight O2. For more information, and if you want to follow me, see the newest update, please go on AHC Poetry on Instagram. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.